Hello all, welcome back to the art stream part two. So I took a little bit of a break and now I am back on doing a, another art stream. So we are just working on this piece. This is what I was working on a little while ago. So now I am back on painting some more. I took a break, had some lunch or finished my lunch. And now we are back on doing more art. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, so I'm thinking for, let me try to bend this. I'm thinking for the outer portion to start to add in some green, maybe. A lot of the colors end up kind of blurred anyhow as I um, start to make it a little bit more abstract. So I'm just adding in this green color now to see how I like this color. It's interesting. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue with this. Let me see if I can kind of bend this like I had it before. It's like a towel here to try to help with the paint. I'm trying also to make sure like I don't like Close the computer so much so that you can't, um, it stops working maybe. Okay. So I'm just adding in this green color here. I didn't even add in any solvent to this, which would like lighten the, the density, but I still feel like, I don't know, maybe it's because this particular canvas, like, I feel like it takes a little bit of effort to build up the saturation of the color. That's okay. So I'm just adding in this green color here. I don't usually have like these paintings really figured out while I am working. I'm gonna try my best to kind of, because I can't totally see what I'm doing. I will try my best here. Yeah, if I could figure out how to have some like overhead camera, that would really benefit the painting process, I think, because then, you know, you could see me, but also see what I'm doing, kind of. <clears throat> but welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really love art and I'm really into Disney and painting and art and Disney World and welcome to my channel. Maybe I can see about how to build this up here again. Maybe I can use this towel thing here. To kind of build this up. Let me see. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just trying to use some of these um, rags I have here to um, kind of, I'm trying to build up like the leaning here, if that makes sense. Thank you so much all for being here. Hello, how are you? Welcome back. So glad to have you here. From Germany, right? Did I did I remember that correctly? From Germany? Is that where you were tuning in from? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. I hope you are doing fantastic as well. See, I remember. Thank you so much for being here again. I really appreciate it. So I don't know if you ever saw um, the... When you tuned in the first time, we were working on the piece with Grogu. So this is what it ended up coming out as. Let me try to bring it closer to the camera. So it ended up coming out very kind of 
abstract. I wrote Grogu three times on it. I'm very influenced by like abstract art. I like animation in the sense of like drawing characters. Uh, not so much necessarily in like making a care. Thank you so much. Hello, Miriam. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. How are you? <clears throat> we are painting Donald Duck. Well, I'm very happy to have you here now. I hope everything has been going well for you. Um, happy New Year. I'm doing good. I'm glad it's the new year, guys. Um, I don't feel like anything has really changed that much, but I guess it's good it's the new year. <laughs> I've seen these like TikTok memes where like it shows like people's like New Year's resolutions and it was like um, January 1st, positivity, January 2nd, positivity. And then it like by the 6th, they're like, you know, same old, but you know, everything is good. I'm, you know, trying to, um, be inside more, just like, you know, it's our bad here last week. Water was in everywhere. It starts bad here last week. Water was in everywhere. Like a flood? Water? Like a lot of rain? But um, here it's a little cooler. I mean, it's still very hot here. It's Florida. So, and it's Miami. So, you know what I mean? It's going to be, it's going to be very, very hot here. So, nothing you could do. A lot of rain. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was raining last night, um, but um, not, like, too bad. Okay, Tabby, thank you so much for stopping in. I probably will be on, you know, throughout the day painting inside. Um, but I've just kind of been inside more because, I don't know, the... I don't know. Florida is not too great right now with, you know, everything that's going on. So, um, just kind of trying to stay inside more. Um, I try to like go to the grocery store when there's like not too many people there that way. There's just like less people, you know, that you're coming in contact with, but, um, just trying to be as careful as possible, you know? I watch a lot of the Disney streams to make me happy, you know, watching people go on rides and that type of stuff, but, you know, and also doing a lot of art. That's kind of what I've been doing, um, which I enjoy. I just wish I could do, <clears throat> you know, other things as well, if that makes sense. Like, I enjoy doing the art and doing the live streams, but at the same time, I want, like, I wish there was more of a balance for sure, but you know, gotta be grateful and happy for the good. Yep. We are doing the best we can for sure. I think this is just such a strange time period. It's, like, I don't think any of us have ever gone through something like this before. I guess, you know, really, they were saying, like, the only thing that's comparable is, like, 1918, which, you know, we haven't lived through. So, but it's just such a strange time period. And, like, from what I've heard from other people who are I'm hearing their feedback, everyone kind of has the same reaction. Like, it was, it's just gone on so much longer. Where are you? I think you mean, what? where are you filming? I'm in my house, Travis. Just at my table instead of my kitchen. So that way I can sit. <laughs> but um, I think so many people's reactions has been. Um, I feel like people are just like saying like this has been going on a lot longer than they thought this was going to go on. That's like the feedback I've been hearing like 
Like I thought like all this was going to be like two, three months, maybe, you know, that type of thing. And like to have it like where it's still going on is just like completely bewildering for sure. You know, but doing the best I can for sure. You like drawing cartoons. I do. Um, I have, um, I'll try to like show it to you guys. I have a video of it up on YouTube, but I'll try like to show with the camera in the future. I do, I've done like abstract pieces. Like I did like this four panel canvas piece that's in my kitchen and it doesn't have any cartoon to it. It's just color and like colors that swirl together. So it's like an abstract piece, but without the cartoon part to it. But yeah, I like drawing the cartoons um, and then kind of trying to make them more on the abstract side. I think it's just because I love Disney and I love like animation and that type of stuff. I think it's referred to as like the Disney golden era. I, I wasn't familiar with I vote to draw Goofy next. Okay, we can do Goofy next for sure. Let's do Goofy next. Um. And that'll go well with this because we have Donald and then we'll have Goofy, right? That kind of, it could be like a, kind of like a, a pair of paintings together. And we have, a, we have a Mickey one that all kind of goes together. But, um, like the Disney films, especially that like, were like considered like the golden era of films, if that makes sense, are like the original films, like Aladdin the Lion King, uh, The Little Mermaid, you know, all of the original, original Disney films, the original animated films. Uh, that was like considered like the golden era of Disney, Cinderella, you know, all the original animation. And um, I was very influenced, I think, by that time period, as well as the content. And, you know, I, I just loved watching the animation mostly for appreciating the art behind it it wasn't even like the plot like oh i wanted to watch the plot of cinderella it was more just like the beauty behind some of the art and the paintings is just was always very very uh pretty to me and appealing so um i've always loved drawing characters and i'm a big disney fan and I haven't been there in a while, even though I don't, I don't even live that far away. I live, um, maybe four hours. Aladdin is my favorite animated film. I really love Aladdin. Um, I would, I think Aladdin is mine too. Like for an animated film, I really like Aladdin. I think Aladdin was always one of my favorite, if not the favorite, uh, animated film. Um, I don't know. Some of them are very good. I know now they, I feel, I feel like now they focus a lot more Disney on Pixar and, um, that type of animation rather than, um, uh, like hand-drawn animation. Um, um, I think they were saying that Lilo and Stitch the movie was actually one of, if not the last animated film that was done in hand-drawn uh, watercolors. So um, I always like loved like the animation of before Pixar, if that makes sense. I mean, Pixar is cool with all the animation and different techniques they can do now, but I really loved the, um, the art behind like I mean it's still art to do it like Pixar and, and that type of animation but um you know what I mean like hand-drawn animation that relies on like watercolors and that type of stuff so let's see I did not but I did google it so I know what you're talking about now but I think that movie probably relied on also like Pixar type. Um, not that it, I don't think it was Pixar. I'm not sure. But um, 
the, you know what I'm talking about, like computerized graphics. Um, I feel like they rely on, I feel like, yeah, I mean, there, there are drawings still, like in their storyboards and they incorporate all that into art today. But um, I do miss like the, um, you know, the regular way of animation. even film today is relying so much so on um, like CGI animation. Um, it's really cool and weird at the same time how like you'll watch Star Wars, for example, and they were able to like recreate characters that have are, you know, no longer working or, you know, passed away and they can like actually like, through CGI, like, if you watch, like, Star Wars and stuff, like, they were able, to, like, to bring back, like, Carrie Fisher and, like, different, like, old-time actors that were in Star Wars and um, recreate them, like, through CGI. It was just, it's weird and cool, but it's, like, yeah, they're doing all these kinds of, like, different graphics today with CGI, so... The computerized technology today can can basically, you know, you don't even need like real actors anymore because they can make actors out of like, you know, computerized and it looks real. So it's like, I just feel like there's such a reliance on that right now. It's cool, but at the same time, I miss like some of the, you know, like with animation, you know, like hand-drawn animation, but... Aladdin was always my, um, I think, my favorite animated movie. Um, Hunchback of Notre Dame was really good. Uh, the music in Hunchback of Notre Dame is really, really pretty. I think that uh, some of the prettiest songs are in that movie, actually. I feel like it's a really underrated movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, in other words, when you when you hear about like Disney animated films. I feel like that's not the first one people think of, but it's a very, very, very pretty um, movie with the songs in it. In Disney, they used to have a stage show of it where actors like played the parts and there was music. I don't think they have that anymore, but it was a very, very um, pretty um, uh, show. It would take one good animator to make his own animated movie. Um, that's a good question. I mean, if they're doing just animation, like hand-drawn animation, like storyboards and like, you know, general animation, like just like how to make a character move and stuff like that. I don't know. It could take a couple months, a year maybe, but the animation today with Pixar type styling where they're, um, you know, using the computerized graphics, I don't know. It could take, I don't know about one person. I mean, I was watching a documentary of, um, it's a documentary on Pixar and it shows like some of the different people that go into it. And there's so many people involved with a project like that. Um, you have, you know, the storyboard people, you have people who are in creative writing. Yeah, um, it really depends on the project, which was interesting was Beauty and the Beast, which is, you know, one of the original animated films, which was before the time of Pixar and, and that type of animation, you know, just hand drawn animation. I think they said that Beauty and the Beast took them four years to make, which really surprised me. I don't know if it was just that they were confused about um storyboard wise in other words the direction i'm just getting some more paint guys give me one second but i'm going to keep talking i don't know if they were confused with the direction of the film or what they were doing with that but in the documentary they said that um it took like four years to create beauty and the beast and uh which kind of surprised me uh and um, some of these other films, as you're familiar, like, I don't know, Avatar or these different ones that incorporate different uh, computer stuff. I mean, it could take years. But um, 
I mean, I think it's really cool. I mean, I love some of these uh, documentaries that they have on um, how the movies are, you know, everything that goes into it. Um, you know, there's just so many different components to it. It's not just the animators. You have creative writers um, who are, you know, working alongside the animators. And then they kind of, they, a lot of times will, it's kind of like a work in progress. Like the, the, the writer will create like maybe a specific scene and then the animator will draw it and they'll see if it works or not, or if they have to go back and add something to it, you know, from the writing process or the, or they just don't like the way it looks in animation or it's missing something. So it's really a, like a collective effort that goes on was really good but I don't think it would yeah when I watched the documentary I was kind of surprised it was a Beauty and the Beast that's why it's surprising because Beauty and the Beast was way before the time period of like really high skilled animation like it didn't use you know computer graphics or anything like that so when I watched the documentary it was actually um I think her name is Paige O'Hara she's actually the voice of Belle and she was talking about it. And I think she said when she went in to record the voice of Belle, um, she recorded it all in one day, I think she said, like all the dialogue. But um, then she said, um, yeah, they can make all these stories like really come to life. And it's just really cool. Um, she said that it took four years I guess of editing it or whatever. I don't know what happened with that movie or maybe they had budget problems. I have no idea, but she said like over a four year period, she worked on that movie. So she went in, worked on it. And then she said something like she wouldn't hear for them. Could be months, six months. She didn't hear from Disney. And then they called her back in. Hey, can you come back in? We need you to, you know, redo a specific scene or a specific song. So the entire thing, she said took four years from the time period that they, I guess, started the actual filming of Beauty and the Beast to um, releasing it into production, which really surprised me because, I, it, again, Beauty and the Beast is amazing, but it's not on, you know, Avatar level. So I was a little surprised that it took that type of time for it. Um, yeah, and... The only thing I can say about animated films is that I always feel like the original are always better. Like even with Aladdin, you know, they, they tried to make like, you know, sequels and everything like, like Aladdin two or Cinderella two. And, um, I always felt like the original movies were better. Um, you know, you'd go back and you'd watch, uh, Pocahontas two or Aladdin two or Aladdin three, um, hello, welcome back, Tabby. Uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of rewrites happening with Beauty and the Beast. That's what she indicated, that they had her come in. They had all the story ready to go because she did say she filmed the entire thing in one day for voice recording. And then I think they were indicating that they were just changing things quite a bit. But it's interesting that, you know, they didn't have more of a time constraint that in other words they usually you know you, you got to get a film out you can't like you know be working on it for for you know that amount of time so that's pretty interesting and then because we're talking about like art and everything what I find is super interesting is the sometimes the voice actor and the singing actor for a animated character is two different people. Sometimes it is. Like sometimes you have a, a speaking actor for a voiceover and sometimes you actually have a singing person which is a different person. In the case of Beauty and the Beast, it's the same person. So the girl, the woman that plays Belle is the speaking voice as well as the singing voice of Belle. And what's interesting about her, she had a big background because I was watching a documentary on her and uh, in theater, um, Broadway, and that type of stuff. And what's interesting about her is that now she was always an artist. Like she was, like she's a creative. So she liked, you know, multiple things. You didn't put that much work into the animated film, would have ended. Yeah, they, I mean, there's so much work that goes into these films, you know, 
creative directors. Um, something I've always found very fascinating, um, maybe you guys too, is that um, a lot of times you can see the recording sessions of these animated films. And I just find that so fascinating. In other words, you see like this large room where there's an orchestra and the orchestra is um, creating the music for the film. You'll see it like with the Lion King, they bring in a very, very large orchestra and they are recording the, um, the music for the film. I always, that always gives me goosebumps when I watch um, those moments of how a film is created. Um, what's interesting about her is that the woman who played Belle and the voice of Belle, she, um, was also an artist. Like she loved to draw and to paint. And, um, at Disney world, they have what's called festival of the arts. So, and one of their theme parks is called Epcot and they have different like pavilions around the park where it's supposed to be like different countries. So like they have the Canada pavilion, the France pavilion. So they have like different countries, represented in Epcot and they have rides and different shows and they have something there called festival of the arts. And that's where you walk around the different countries and you see lots of different art displayed. It's really cool. And you see different art pavilions throughout the different rides in the countries. And they also have uh, food that's made in like a creative way. Like the food looks very artistic. So, and what's interesting is because the woman who played bell is an artist she now does that um, primarily now, because I think she's kind of retired from um, um, acting. I think she does it a little bit here or there, like for like, she does like benefit concerts, which is really cool. Like where um, like all the princesses will get together and they will sing and like raise money and that type of stuff. So she does things like that, but she's an artist. So she's actually one of the artists featured at, um, festival of the arts at disney world so as you're walking around you can actually see her art up and a lot of the time she's there which is really cool so she's there painting in epcot and you can see her painting the work and she'll sign it and things like that and what's so cool about that is that you're seeing this woman paint at disney world and she's painting of course she likes to paint Belle a lot and beauty and the beast of course because she was she was Belle. But that's so cool to like walk around Epcot and see this woman there painting. She's painting Belle. She's, you know, creating this beautiful piece of Beauty and the Beast. And then you realize she's the voice of Belle. You know, she she was Belle. And um, what's really cool is that, and that happens a lot with animation, is that um, they would draw into the animated movie a lot of her her features one of the movies that i was fascinated was moana yeah i haven't seen it yet actually isn't that crazy i haven't seen that i haven't seen frozen there's so many disney animated movies that are now like the like the go-to movie and i haven't seen them it's so bad I need to like, just like sit down and have like, I know I need to sit down. I have Disney plus, so there's no excuse, right? It's on Disney plus, but I need to like literally just sit down and like, just like watch all the animated movies that I haven't seen. But, um, I just think that's so cool. And it's not surprising to me that she's there painting because if you're a creative and you sing and, yeah, I know. We'll take a day off and just watch all the movies. Uh, but it doesn't surprise me in the sense of like when you're a creative and you, you know, you sing or you do theater or different things, you know, often creatives are good at multiple things. You know, if someone can sing, they there's a chance they love art too and that type of stuff. So, you know, it doesn't really surprise me that she's an artist and now she's doing that quite a bit at Disney. So I think that's really cool. I don't think she lives in Orlando. I'm not sure where she lives. I had seen in the documentary, she um, she was doing Broadway out of Las Vegas. So I don't know, you know, before when the world was normal, but um, I don't, I think she's retired from um, the theatrical part of uh, the industry. But um, I just think it's really cool. I just think it's really fascinating. Um, um, 
when you have a chance, you should really uh, go to on YouTube. I know we're on YouTube now, but you should go on YouTube and you should type in. Um, it's the recording session. I have so much of the yellow color, but I don't need it. Yeah, I need to get. I have yellow in my um, paint area. This is kind of like a light green color, but you guys should check out. Um, like the recording sessions of some of these animated movies, like Aladdin, for example, uh, since you guys like the movie Aladdin. Um, if you go to YouTube and you type in recording session of Aladdin, you could see the original singers sing, uh, you know, a whole new world and stuff like that. And the orchestras, they're singing, uh, playing with them. It's really quite amazing. It gives you goosebumps when you watch it. It's, they're, they're just so, so talented. Let's see what color I should get now. My paints are like literally an inch away, but I just want to see. I want to see about what kind of color I could get to mix in here. Maybe some sort of blue. Hmm. I think I'll get a blue color. I have like a teal blue color. You know what? I have some, you know what? I don't think it dried yet. That's interesting. I had actually squeezed out. Yeah, I have like a blue. I had actually squeezed out some blue here earlier when I was working with this blue color. I actually have some blue here. Let's see what that looks like. I have to turn it towards me for a second to like, so that way I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, yeah, as far as painting goes, I really love painting. Um, I, I always used to paint you know, every day, that's what I would do, you know, on weekends and stuff like that. I would just, you know, paint the entire day basically. And I always found it so relaxing. So, um, I really truthfully love art and painting. And when I started YouTube, um, not that long ago, a couple months ago, I was saying to myself when I was doing streaming, especially, you know, what do I want to stream? What do I want to do? Like, what do people, what do people do with streaming? So, um, you know, I came up with the idea of why don't I, why don't I paint? And then I have done the cooking streams as well. And I should start to do some more of those that way I'm doing multiple things, but I am glad that you guys are here and enjoying the painting stream. And we talk about Disney and art and movies and but I find art relaxing I can kind of see it in the viewfinder that's why I tend to like look at the where I'm looking if you wonder where I'm looking I'm looking at the screen to try to see I can actually see more of how the painting is going to look by looking at it like that than um by um, basing it my way, actually. Keep in mind, I am painting this backwards because I am trying to give you guys the best angle possible to see what I'm doing. Yeah. <clears throat> but I try to look at the positive of things in the sense of, yeah, I'm inside more and yeah, I'm not going out, but I'm creating art and I created a YouTube channel. So that's actually something positive that I can say happened from this time period. Like if, you know, I have always wanted to create a, um, a YouTube channel. And I guess I would always like, be like, Oh, I'm too busy to do that. Or, you know, it just it just never materialized. So uh, I guess a positive I can say that came from this time period was being able to uh, spend more time, you know, doing things like this for myself and creating, you know, art and everything.
soda break. <laughs> I just put it over there. Now we have Sprite. We don't have 7-Up. We have Sprite. Okay, so let's see. We have a, a space here, which has not been painted yet. So I don't know what we should paint here. We could just make it green, but I mean, we could also make it a different color. And then like, like I did with the Grogu piece, I ended up like putting a lot more paint on it and making it a little bit more abstract. So and then we have to like do the rest of like, you know, the body area, like the hands, the, the area here hasn't been painted yet, the feet, you know, the face, the hat. So there's a lot, there's a lot to do still. Hmm. <clears throat> I always feel like I leave the body for last. Like I always leave like the detail work for last. But um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, so let's see about getting some colors here. Give me one second, guys. I'm just gonna go wash these two brushes and I'm gonna get some more paint. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so I've got, I just got some like red colored paint. Uh, let me see if I can get, I was trying to get like three bars. Sometimes if I like pick up my phone, I can like, you know, get it to do that. Showing three bars now, so. So I got like a darker red color here. So let's see about where I can add this to. Oh, there's like such loud noise happening outside. I hope that doesn't interfere with my stream. Give me one second, guys. Let me see about closing the door. I live where there is people going back and forth. Closing this. Okie dokie, I am back. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okie dokie. Let me see about moving this. I don't know what is happening with the signal, but hopefully the signal is okay. Okay, I'm just seeing about adding in like a red color. Okay, so I added in that red color there. Let me see about... Hmm. 
Hmm. Let me see about um. It's like I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing instead of just me. But uh, I hope that doesn't like turn off the computer in some weird way. You know, like when you close the lid. But I hope that's okay. So. I'm just starting to add in some more like color. I don't want it to look so precise, if that makes sense. I want it to look a little bit more fluid, like, so I need to kind of like go over some areas and start to kind of make that look a little bit more. <clears throat> what I mean by fluid is like, I don't want like every area to look like the same sizing of lines. I kind of want it to just look a little bit more like free form. It gives it more of that abstract type of feel. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to add more color variation here. I don't want it to look so staged, if that makes sense. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm just trying to make it look not so, um, I guess, I just want it to look like more like free, you know, lines. I don't want it to look like all like the same sized lines. So I'm trying almost like don't want it to look so perfect, like with different like lines or something like that, if that makes sense. I think this painting location is working for you guys. I mean, before I was painting in my, um, my kitchen area, for sure. Before I was painting in my kitchen area and um, it was pretty difficult also to, to obviously stand for like a long period of time and to try to attempt to show you what I'm doing with angling. So, you know, I think this area is better because I can sit at least, <clears throat> at least I can sit, you know, and kind of, you know, it could always hold it up like that. So you could see what I'm doing. But I think that this is probably the best angling situation that we're going to get right now until I can figure out some sort of camera situation where mm -hmm. I could bend the camera so you can see what I'm doing more. Um, once I have the ability to stream from my phone, because right now I'm on a computer, but once I have the ability to stream from my phone, I could, um, <clears throat> once I have the ability to stream from my phone, I could probably, you know, tilt the phone downward, like on some sort of gimbal, so that when it's filming, you can see more of what I'm doing, like, if that makes sense. But for now, this is kind of what, we have in terms of angling that I can do. We are just painting here. But I really enjoy art. For me, it's very relaxing. It allows for me to 
produce, you know, my creativity and I hope you guys enjoy it too. A lot of you are artists yourselves or enjoy art. <clears throat> There's a um, really cool uh, pavilion in Epcot uh, for the Mexico pavilion there. And they have a lot of art in there as well, like a lot of different um, art areas in there as well as a really cool restaurant. This piece actually reminds me of some of the art that they've chosen to have in there just like the color scheme. They have a really cool ride in there in that pavilion at Epcot. And I feel like some of the wall art they have in there kind of looks like this. <clears throat> Let's see about, do I have any white left? I don't, the bad part about how I won't get a new um, drawing like a four month ago, I'm starting to see stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, one of the best advice, first of all, I mean, anything with practice, you're going to improve. Art can be considered, you know, a skill set, you know, so you'll learn how to, you know, use different mediums. Um, and you know how to work with different you know textures and different things like that but i always want you guys to remember with art that i really 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 truthfully believe that anything you create is art i don't want you guys to like feel like if you feel it's art it's art like i don't want you guys to like feel like if like oh it doesn't look you know like like what you consider to be gallery level. I don't want you guys to think that what you're creating is not art. I had a really good art teacher a very long time ago. And it was probably like one of my first art teachers. And I remember I was painting something and um, I think I like crumpled it up. I didn't think it was good. And I threw it out and she came over and she said something like, why did you throw it out? And I said, because it wasn't any good. And she took it out of the garbage and she said, anything you create is art. And it, that was kind of like a moment that I remember a lot. So although you can certainly improve with art and learn different techniques and, you know, you improve on things like how to blend, but you also need to number, you know, find your own voice in art. Meaning if I were to sit down and try to paint a um like one of these very very super realistic pieces you know it's the paintings that look like they're almost a photo that's not my my specialty i could probably learn how to improve with that type of art like i could i could learn how to blend better and how to work on different techniques to improve that as a skill but it's not um the background looks like a watermelon thank you Oh, it does because of the green and the red. Yeah, I just want it to be vibrant. But, you know, I kind of found my voice in art in the sense of like, I know the type of art I enjoy creating. So for me, you know, that type of um, the type of art where it looks like a, you know, like a photo, like very, very realistic paintings of nature is not my, my vibe. So, um, you know, for me to attempt a painting like that, it probably won't be my best, if that makes sense. I could learn how to improve on different skills on how to create a painting like that. But <clears throat> I encourage you guys to find the type of art. Yeah, it's a very difficult ability to do that type of, of art, but I encourage you guys to find art you feel is kind of like your, your specialty, if that makes sense, like in whatever it is. There are so many techniques you can, um, you can use to create art. You can use your fingers, you can, you can you know, dip your fingers in paint and create different textures. You can, um, 
use um, on some of the pieces like this one, the, the bag, the stitch bag that we were working on the other day. Uh, you know, I used a cotton ball at a certain point to create the texture on the sand. So there's so many like things you can like experiment with different textures and see how to um, create certain effects, but also like what you feel your artistic passion is. Like I knew someone who was really, really good at um, anime type drawing. So not necessarily like she could, she could obviously with ease paint, you know, something like this, but she was extremely talented at very, very, very detailed anime caricatures that she would draw. And uh, that was her specialty. So I encourage you guys to find your, your kind of thing that makes you happy in painting and drawing. What is your specialty? You know, do you like, and that doesn't mean you can't explore other types of art, but like what I'm saying is like, I think if you kind of find what you're good at, like what you enjoy creating or you'll, you'll realize it's not hard to create. Mine is colorful, colorful characters and stuff. I would call it animation and abstract is kind of what I do. That's awesome. And you can do a lot with that. You can draw it on paper, canvas, oil paints, acrylics. There is a lot that you can do with that. You can make a storyboard, like an animation. You can incorporate it into like a creative writing piece, you know, where there's like writing and then there's like almost like a book, like illustrating a book. There's definitely a lot, a lot, a lot that you can do with that specialty. So we are just working on this. <clears throat> if you guys are liking my stream, please do remember to give it a thumbs up for me. That really helps me out with the great... YouTube algorithm. You're currently writing a book. Very cool. Yeah, that's so cool. And thank you. Um, yeah, that was what I was saying. Like you could you could have it like where, where a page is dedicated to writing and then animation on the other side, or you could have animation even alongside the writing. So there's a lot that you can do um, if you're into creative writing and writing a book and then also illustration at the same time. Let's see what color we can get next. Hmm. I think I'm gonna get a light blue color. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna wash this brush and get some light blue color. Okie dokie. Oh, I forgot the paint. Like, I came, I washed my brush and I forgot the paint. Give me one second. Let me get some blue. All my paints fell over. It's okay. That's what the noise was. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Okay, let's see how the signal is. Right now I've got full bars. I think that's amazing. I have my phone in some weird angle and it's hooked up to my phone right now, which is how I'm powering the internet. So let's see, I have some blue here. Let's see about. But yeah, I find art to be very um, relaxing for me. Um, I'm adding some blue there. Um, and what's cool about YouTube, especially with the streaming, as opposed to posting a art vlog, is that it's a very, um, like it's an interactive experience, you know, talking and chat. Um, I've gotten good feedback from you guys, like on, you know, how to improve different things. Oh, you know, do that, use that color. So it's a very interactive experience, um, which is fun because it's different mm -hmm. than just painting, you know, in silence. Yeah, I mean, like, normally if I wasn't streaming right now, I could be watching a movie, but literally I'd be doing the exact same thing. I would just be painting, except, you know, not not recording it that's that's really the only difference and um you know watching a movie or something like that but um there wouldn't be you know any difference and the other thing is like i think like streaming it keeps me like accountable in the sense that like it it motivates me to paint more and create more art um and then it's cool to like document it in the sense of like seeing how a piece, you know, grew and where it started from. Hi Bryce. Welcome on in. Welcome. Yes, we are painting um, Donald Duck. Let me see how the signal is doing. My phone just got stuck to the to the painting. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, we are painting Donald Duck. <laughs> yeah, but normally if I wasn't, um, if I wasn't recording it, I'd still be doing the same thing, honestly. No, not a bag. So this is just a simple canvas. So it looks like this. And simple canvas. Yeah, it's just a little canvas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, we took a break from a bag or a backpack, but I'm sure there will be another one of those at some point. Mm 
Let's, yeah. Now it's so quiet here. Before I had the door open and there was really loud music and stuff. Now it's quiet. <laughs> But yeah, I think I do a lot of characters though. I think I'm always like painting like Disney characters or animation or anything like that. A phone, like the back of a phone or like a phone case. That's a good idea actually. I've seen it where people have painted and customized like phone, um, like phone cases. Like, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for stopping in. See you next time. I've seen where people have painted um, phone um, cases. I don't know if you can paint, I guess you could to paint an actual phone. That would be cool to get. Um, that's cool, very cool. I'm wondering with that type of paint I wouldn't do a phone just because I only have one phone, but, um, like I, I would, I could try like with phone cases and stuff, but, um, that type of paint that does that, I think is paint, it's leather paint. So, um, I think it would be, so like if you were going to paint, for example, um, uh, like Nike sneakers, the, the type of texture on a Nike sneaker is actually a little bit different. Um, it's the same thing you would use. Yeah, it's the same thing you would use um, if you were painting on like a handbag or leather. It's, I think it's leather paint, which is a different type of paint. I think it's like a little bit of a thicker consistency. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but I think that's what I would use for a phone case as well. Yeah, I was going to say, there's probably like a whole process to, um, I guess, preparing the surface for painting. Um, I've seen them do that even with sneakers for that type of painting, um, especially sneakers that are being um, like refurbished, if that makes sense. Like you've seen those things where they take sneakers that are old and they can, um, first they kind of like prepare them for the paint uh, and make it like the surface smoother. Um, and then it's kind of like, in a sense, retextured with the painting process. I don't know what it is. I think it's the 10, I think. It's not the newest one. That's true. I don't, I don't think I have the newest one. It's like the 10, I think. Um, but yeah, that's just what I use right now. Um, you know, in the future, as I grow with YouTube, like into the future, I'll probably get like a, 
like a vlogging camera into the future. I mean, um, right now though, yeah. I mean, there's always new ones coming out and supposedly like they have better like cameras as they come out, like better quality, um, filming on them and stuff. Um, you know, as I grow on YouTube and stuff like that, um, I mean, a couple of things happen. I would, I gained the ability to stream from my phone, but that's for streaming, but into the future, I'll probably eventually get, um, like a good vlogging camera that has photo and, um, video capability. I can kind of see it through. This one is the iPhone 12. Yeah, I can't even keep up with all the phones they come out with. They come out with so many new ones. I think it's pretty much, I would say it's every year, right? That they come out with a new phone. I think it's pretty much every year. Yeah, I know, right? I think it's every I feel like every year, at least, they come out with a new phone, maybe even quicker than that. You know, every year, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's probably every year. I was going to say two times a year, I don't think so. Because then, like, no one can even buy, you know, whatever's come out. There's always people like that are like the first ones to get it too. Like you'll see it. Like, I don't know if it's like a publicity stunt sometimes. Like you wonder, like they're lined up for like, you know, the entire day at a phone store to try to get the newest phone that comes out. Maybe. Yeah. If it's got like a different, I don't know how much of an like difference it was between the two. Yeah. But I think there were times where like two of them maybe came out or like maybe there was like a slight difference in, you know, one that came out. I think the, the, you know, the advertising point on the newer one that came out was, um, uh, I don't know, the camera, like the two, three cameras or something that were, because um, I know it has like three lenses or something instead of one lens. I was just blending I was blending the paint a little bit towards the back you see that area there I was blending that a little bit I don't really need to extend the paint that far because you're not really going to see it I'm just painting the top of it a little bit, the same color, the same color as this, like just like so that it wraps a little bit, you know, kind of just smoothing it down now. Well, I came on for this project earlier today. This one was started today, but I came on earlier today uh, for about an hour, and then I got hungry. So then I stopped that stream, and that stream should be actually posted already. It's only about an hour, 
And then I took a break, ate lunch, and now I am back on working again. And we've been on for a little bit over an hour. So I'm probably going to just do like another 10 minutes or so on this one. Um, and uh, we'll do more of this tomorrow. So like another 10 minutes, just kind of trying to smooth out this blue section here since we covered it with another, because before it was red, this section. So I'm just trying to cover this area. But I'm glad you are all here for the stream. Maybe, maybe, it depends on how tired I am. I mean, I just came on a little earlier just because I was home and, you know, kind of why not? But um, maybe, um, I almost feel like it's better to like take a break and come back on as a new stream than to um, just stay on as one large stream. You know what I mean? Like. If I stay on as like a six, seven hour stream, it's probably better to just, you know, break it up into smaller streams, even if I come back on the same day. I think the video probably even gets more reach that way. This blue color covers really well. Like this blue color, like this area here was red before. And when I go over this area now with the blue, it covers really well. Yeah, I'm just smoothing out this blue section here because it had, it was a different color. Do you get any? I don't, like yesterday, like the internet and the phone was not working very well. I think a lot of people were having that problem, but like now I think it's working. And also in the area that I'm sitting now, I feel, it says I have three bars right now. I feel like it's working. I think because of the way my kitchen is shaped, it's kind of like a rectangle. Um, there's not the best internet in there, if that makes sense. So um, I think this area is a little bit better, maybe even for the art streams. I hope you guys think so. Um, it also enables me to sit, which is good. Because if I can sit, I can actually like, you know, not have to stand, especially if I'm, if I'm painting for a longer period of time. So that's a good thing. Um, let me kind of try and I just touched it. This is the problem with painting multiple sections at once. Let me just try to kind of move it over here, kind of see what it looks like. Let me see about kind of just moving this and drop like that. Okay. It's working for you, but for me, my internet stops, comes back in a half an hour, stays for 10 to 15 minutes and goes away. Oh, that's not good. Now I'm using data. Well, hopefully it'll, hopefully that works itself out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like so many people are having internet problems lately. I think it has, I feel like it almost has to do with like more people on the internet maybe. Thank you. 
Okie dokie. I am back. Yeah, I feel like everyone is having um, internet problems right now. I don't know kind of why that's happening. I mean, it could be like there's more people on the internet right now. I don't know. More people are staying home. Um, that could be part of the, the issue. You know, instead of people being out there, more people are home, you know, doing different live streams, <laughs> you know. So that could be part of it for sure. Let me just move this into the kitchen so that I don't get paint on anything. That's possible, you know. The more people that are on... Yeah, I think we're probably, I'm going to show it to you again, the painting, if I can touch it without getting it. So this is where we are at so far, guys, with this painting. Okay, so I'm just going to like put it here to start to dry. But um, if you guys are interested in seeing how this painting started, um, there is a, a live stream that I posted right before this one where I came on for about an hour, it's up today, uh, from today, where we started this painting. So this is part two of this painting. Um, I figure this one's going to probably be another two streams, something like that. I feel like this one is going to be taking longer. Like this one, this one that we did in the sketchbook. Oops, I almost spilled my soda. This one that we did in the sketchbook took about actually five hours. This took about five hours, and we've been on now a total between the two streams, probably like two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. So this one took about five hours, kind of in that abstract type of way. So let me see. You could live stream. I don't know. Um, my usual time is is six p.m. You know what I'll do? I will, um, I think what I'll do is I'll set it tonight. Does that make sense? I'll set it ahead of time and I'll put a time on it for when I'm coming on. That way you guys can see it ahead of time for when, um, I'm going to set it. But thank you guys so much for being here. So there's this stream that's up and then there's the one from earlier where I, um, I started this piece. So this is part two. So if you're interested in seeing part one, that should be up already. You can see it. Um, you know, it loaded on the system because it was done live. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys all have a good day. That's, that's what you did. Yeah. Oh, I, sometimes I've been doing that and sometimes I haven't. I, um, sometimes I've been, um, I don't know what happened in the chat. Sometimes I've been posting it ahead of time and sometimes I haven't. In other words, kind of like there should always be notifications coming out, but sometimes I'll kind of preset um, streams. So that way, um, you know, you'll know when I'm coming on. And then sometimes I haven't been and I've just kind of been coming on kind of like a surprise stream. But um, I'm going to set it tonight. That way you guys can see when I'm planning to come on. And I'll do that tonight. It's, you know, it'll be good for me to kind of like design my thumbnail and everything. But thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. And I figure this one will take another, another two streams. But thank you so much, guys. I'll set it tonight. And that way you'll know when I am coming on. Bye, everyone. Bye.